I am over the moon. The boy has done well there. You stand on me, Saint. It's a funny old song, that. You can't give them that sort of room. One nil, spitting image. Marvellous. <laughs> We're on again tomorrow night at 10.45. Yeah, we'll yeah, be yeah. back on again, I think, tomorrow, Jim. Right, but one thing is for certain, there have been few clichés on the pitch in the first week of this World Cup. Cameroons have proved that uh, African football is not to be taken lightly. Two ones for them in Group B over Argentina and Romania. Egypt have issued a warning to both England and Ireland. Two points are far from a formality as Egyptians proved against the Dutch. And it's been gloom for Scottish fans in Genoa. And And the Italians, of course, again, Jim, oh. getting a victory. 1-0 yep, against the USA, not what they expected. Not what they expected, but that's Italy being Italy, and, and uh, you know you know what they're like. Right. OK, well, we, we start today with uh, another impressive performance from a nation that agrees his tip to go all the way, that is West Germany. Here's last night's action against the United Arab Emirates. But here's Klinsmann. And at last... Told to Reuter. The two front men are waiting in the middle again. And it's another one, this time by Klinsmann. Emirates playing it forward again. Ooh, here's a great chance here for them now. Well, they've whacked one in there of the number eight, Mubarak. Ramos cross in. Punched away and not terribly well. And a great save there from Hessler by the keeper Faraj. Bremer with that left foot again. Mateus, this time it's gone in. Hessler, Litbarski. Now, oh, fine. That's a fine goal. Looking well, good, your boys, James. Yes, um, they are looking good, Ian. I'm surprised that they're not favourites, to be honest. Yeah, they, it's surprising they look that, that isn't strong. it? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, scoring goals, I'll tell you what I like about them, the, the crosses they get in. I mean, they're scoring all the goals from crosses because they bang them in, don't they? The amazing thing is, is that they're relentless. They could have scored five before they scored the first goal yesterday uh -huh. and they just come forward and forward and forward. And haven't we heard that before? Sure, they're look, looking very good. Yeah, they are looking good. Well, the press has made pretty depressing reading for fans at home this week. The adjectives used to describe England's opening game with Ireland were far from complimentary. And while the expectations of Scotland may have been low, the headlines were no less damning after their defeat by Costa Rica. Ramirez. Marchena coming from his back four roll. A rare excursion forward for him, and he's got himself into a shooting position here, perhaps. Jara's there. Played in towards Lineker. It's a goal for England, surely. Cascarino battling with Butcher. Sheedy playing it in again. McMahon sitting in there deep. Gets it away. Sheedy. Well, yeah, I have to say, Jim, being in Italy the last few days, the Italians were saying that that game, I'm talking about the Italian football fans, were saying that game, terrible, worst game in the World Cup. They were well, saying it, just all high balls, no yeah, good, you know? Yeah. It I, was. It was the worst game in the World Cup. No question about it. I mean, the Scottish-Costa Rican game was good. At least the Scots and the Costa Ricans played a bit of football. But in that game, there was no football played at all. Yeah. And it, the result wasn't irrelevant because it was a one-all draw and that was important to both sides. But the skill factor just wasn't there. You see, there's a lot of teams playing over in the World Cup, and a lot of those emerging nations yeah. as well, who do play good football. That's right. And when people see class, I mean, this is from, from the Italian game. Now, 
you'll see the, the Italian player getting caught in the corner yeah. there. This is little Donia Doni. Donia Doni, uh, who is a good player. Uh, now, he's a normally they'd player, kick, yeah. uh, I think our fellas would have kicked out of the park there, yeah. but they, they play their way out, Jimmy. Well, maybe you know? they're encouraged to. This is the point, Ian. I mean, you can't tell me that we haven't got players, I mean, that cannot do that sort of thing. We've got people like John Barnes. That, that ball played in there beautifully to Matthews to score. It was no better ball than the one that Waddle played to Gary Lineker. That's so correct. we have got the skill, it's just that we don't really seem to practice it as much or so often as the teams that we've well, seen. Well, the Brazilians here obviously have more skill than That's most, right. Jim. They're lovely, yeah. look at that. In I mean, saying that, I mean, I'm not ruling out England winning the World Cup, but I think what we've got to do is actually express our skills a little bit more than we did, certainly in that first game, if we are going to progress. I mean, it's got to, haven't we? Well, that's a, the thing that depresses, I think, the football fans in this country. When we see, at club level, players like John Barnes, and we've that's seen right. Warren and all the... Like, yeah. And they're, they're doing all the nice things, and it comes that's to right. the World Cup, and they look as if they've they got don't. lead boots on. So the answer is, give us a goal, Gaza. <laughs> Go for it, England. That's it, mate. Right. Well, today, Jim, England and Scotland have the chance to put midweek disappointment behind them as they meet Holland and Sweden, respectively. Now, one certain cause for celebration is that Peter Shilton will today become the most capped international player ever. He gets his 120th cap against the Dutch, overtaking the previous world record holder, another outstanding goalkeeper, Pat Jennings. In Calgary now, at the England headquarters, to give us today's news, our man, Jim Rosenthal. Good afternoon, James. Hello, Saint. Thanks very much indeed, and welcome to Sardinia. It's absolutely roasting here at the moment, round about 80 degrees, and the local forecasters tell me it's going to be pretty warm in the stadium tonight. A lot of humidity around, that's for sure, and no thunderstorms are forecast. Well, picking the England team is the popular pastime. My view is that Mark Wright is going to start as sweeper, the first time Bobby Robson has ever picked a sweeper. I think Paul Parker might well come in at right back in place of Gary Stevens. Butcher will play alongside Walker. Pearson at left fullback in midfield, Gascoigne and Robson. And just ahead of him, I can see Waddle and Barnes getting forward whenever possible to support Gary Lineker. I have to stress, those are my feelings about the team England are going to play tonight against Holland. And certain to start is Peter Shilton in goal. And Peter, I know the Saint and Greavesy back in the studio want to have a word with you. OK, Jim. Um, yes. Sorry, sorry, Jim, I was just going to say, Peter, obviously, first of all, congratulations. Terrific. Thanks very much, Ian. Uh, it's a wonderful achievement, Peter. You must be very proud. Well, obviously, Jim, uh, it is a proud moment for me um, to take the record off somebody like Pat Jennings, who I've got tremendous respect for as a person as, and as a goalkeeper. And, um, you know, it is a proud moment. But in saying that, you know, the game tonight is more important, you know, to get a result for England and uh, to get on in the World Cup. That's the most important thing. Records, I think, are something that uh, when I finish playing I'll look back on. Well we have the man actually we, you know, at Moor Park today linking up with us now, Pat Jennings. We do, we do, we have Pat somewhere. Where are you Pat? Oh he's on the putting he's, green. He's on the putting green. So he's not chatting to us. Here he comes, he's coming over. Come on big man, hurry yourself. How are you doing Jim? How are you pal? You alright? Can you bad, put yeah. it into perspective what Peter's achieved? Because you've been the man so far, 119 cats. It must be a wonderful thing to play that amount of games. Yeah, it's something that I'm very proud of, you know, but uh, quite honestly, I'm surprised that uh, the record has lasted this long, that uh, some of the England players haven't done it a long time before now, uh, with the amount of internationals that they play. Is there something you'd like to say to Peter, because he can hear you? Just congratulations, Peter. I think I uh, heard his interview there. I think, as he says, he'd be more pleased tonight keeping a uh, clean sheet. Yeah, I think that'll satisfy him more on the record, but it's, as he said, it's something to look back on uh, afterwards in life and look back and say, well, I've been uh, the most capped international player in the world. It's a nice thing to have to say and it's a nice thing to have behind your name. Can both of you tell me, as a striker, I had to give it in early <laughs> while you two go on till 40? Is there something in that? Yeah. Well, I, I think, think, I, think I, the thing... I have pioneered the situation a little bit for them, uh, uh, Jim. They're all looking at me, what I've done. I played uh, in the finals up on my 41st birthday against Brazil. So uh, the saying that Pat Jennings can do it, surely Peter can do it. <laughs> nice one. What do you think, I think, the thing, Well, obviously, um, it's, a, it's easier for a goalkeeper, um, you know, to play on a lot longer than a striker. And I think, you know, it does take a, a quite a bit of uh, dedication and obviously, um, you know, to play over a longer period of time is, 
it's a difficult thing to do, but uh, I think dedication is probably yeah. the, uh, the key word. I think you're right, because you've both been very dedicated men. I mean, I remember playing in front of Pat, <laughs> when he when he used to play teams on his own, and I used to watch him. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Tim. You, you stuck them in at one end, and I tried to keep them out of the other. Pat, thanks very much, sir, and to get back to the putting green, thanks for joining us. Enjoy Thank your you. golf, Pat. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, mate. Jim. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Well, Pete, Peter, just before we go, a quick one. Uh, Jim Rosenthal's saying you might be playing with a sweeper tonight. Now, without giving a game away, have you practised today at all? Have you practised this week with a sweeper? Well, it's not for me to say, um, really, Jim. I mean, obviously, the, the tactics of the team and the way we're going to approach the game, that, that has got to be private. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I just hope that, uh, it, you know, it's a better game than it was the other night because it, was, uh, it wasn't a great game to watch. It wasn't an easy game to play in because uh -huh. there's a lot of pressure on and the wind. People probably can't see on the TV just how bad the conditions were. But in saying that, it wasn't a good game for English football and we hope that... Um, from a footballing sense, uh, that this game will be a lot better and will we'll give the England team in a better light. OK. Now, I got Jim Rosenthal as a presentation for you there, Peter. Yes, we have indeed, Saint. Uh, ITV have uh, dug deep into the budget once again. <laughs> and, Peter, on behalf of uh, ITV Sport, a special gift from us all on ITV. Many congratulations on breaking the record. One or two of the boys have joined us here. Dave Besson, who's just <laughs> arrived here today. Thanks, Jim. Many congratulations Thanks from us all. Much. And uh, here's to a clean sheet tonight. Let's hope so. Well done. Cheers, lad. Well done, lads. Well, that's it for part one. When we come back, we'll look at the weekend opponents for Scotland and the Republic of Ireland, and we offer you another chance to win £2,000. So stay with us. Competition coming up for you. But first, we turn our attention to tonight's Scotland clash with Sweden. Now, after the defeat by Costa Rica, nothing short of a win today will do. But Sweden's defeat by Brazil mean that they are equally determined. Here's 11 reports now from the Swedish headquarters. Just five miles from the Scottish camp in the coastal resort of Camulli, the mood amongst the Swedes is of quiet determination. They too are without a point. Now they anticipate a real battle with the Scots. Andy Roxburgh has described the Swedes as the most efficient team he's seen in the last year. But to that efficiency, the Swedes have added a new exciting dimension in the shape of Thomas Brolin. Here's Brolin, Brolin! With five goals in three games, the 21-year-old Norrköping striker has already attained superstar status in Sweden. Yet he remains as unassuming off the pitch as he is spectacular on it. Yes, maybe uh, I'm standing here and speaking English. It's not fun. <laughs> it's difficult for you. Yeah, a bit. It's it. I'm not so very good in English. <laughs> but you're very good on a football field. Really, this you're having the time of your life. It's as if you're in a dream. I would imagine. Yes, it's a dream, yes. Oli Nordin has prepared his team at Sampdoria's training ground high above the coastline. An inspirational figure, he has encouraged greater aggression in a Swedish side renowned less for its flair than for its disciplined organisation. We have a, a, an organisation in our defence uh, is very strong. Uh, in the attacking play we have uh, also a good organization, but we also have uh, some individuals uh, uh, very unique in the Swedish football. They are playing technical very good and uh, these qualities can, can bring us ahead, I think. Back from injury, his captain, Liverpool defender Glenn Hessen, is used to the physical commitment which will play a big part in what has all the makings of a British-style cup tie. Yeah, it will be very tough. They, need, they, they really need to win now, Saturday. And I know normally the British teams, uh, in general, uh, when, when they have to do something, they're really going for it for, for 100%, so this is going to be a, very, uh, it's going to be a battle Saturday. No, what about the T-shirt? That's that you've got it, on mate. There? Mow them down, Mo. <laughs> Sink one for us. Under, not over the bar, Mo. Good luck to you, pal. Good luck to all the jocks. Well done. Keep yeah. going. Well, one thing's for sure, we can't play any worse than we did the other day. That is for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. OK, well, tomorrow afternoon, ITV are live with the Republic of Ireland against Egypt. We're on air at 3.30, and as we saw on Tuesday, any thoughts of a pushover victory have disappeared. Tony Francis is our man in Sicily. He reports now on the kind of support that Egypt can expect in Palermo tomorrow. Hani Ranzi, Ahmad Shubair, Ashraf Qasem and Gamal Abdul Hamid may never be household names, 
But if they keep playing like they did against Holland, they could be on a few European shopping lists before long. And that'll suit El Gohari, the Egyptian manager, because it might just persuade his country that world-class footballers can't survive on £3,000 a year. Astonishingly, that's as much as his team of part-timers can expect to earn from the game. And that's why the goal is an airline security officer and the captain runs a woman's boutique in downtown Cairo. But how on earth does a group of sporting paupers teach the Dutch millionaires how to play? Then they play now to, for, uh, for the country first and for themselves second. And not for the money? Uh, not for money, a little money. He's a retired army colonel and it shows. The lads have been slave-driven since February. They train twice a day, in secret, and they're not allowed to watch telly. We must go very hard. And this is in book, in our book, in your book. We must go very hard to work and concentration and everything. After that, maybe God help us. If you were wondering where all the Egyptian support was coming from, well, so was I. The answer lies in Palermo Harbour, where a merchant ship and a naval frigate from Alexandria have been lying idle for a week. I went on board the gunboat to investigate and received the appropriate welcome, of course. Apparently, both captains have been given permission to forget their training manoeuvres in the Med and cheer the lads on. I'm proud of them. I expect more. You think they can win the World Cup? No, I don't think so, but I hope. Do you think they can beat England? And Ireland? Ireland, yes, I think we will win. And England, I hope it will be a good match. Well, we can't get into the Egyptian training camp, Jim, but here's a sneak preview of their defensive lineup for tomorrow. Notice they've dispensed with a sweeper, got a couple of anti aircraft guns instead, just in case any of those high balls are heading for Tony Cascarino. I don't think they'll reach him somehow, do you? Okay, Nasserim. They've got the big guns out for you, Joe. They certainly have, not they? I'll tell you what, then. I hope the supporters behave themselves. I mean, they could be aimed at the terraces, couldn't they? Well, they're, they're one of actually the surprise teams, and pleasantly surprised. Everybody over in uh, Italy was saying how they thought that Egypt were a great team. Yeah, the new Brazilians, I was saying. Flying well. They are playing well. As you well know. <laughs> right. Now it's competition time once again, and first the result of last week's Mexico goals competition, in which we asked you to select the top three from six of the 1986 best efforts. Now, in third place, goal F, Maradona against Belgium. Maradona. Our, our panel of experts felt that that was uh, Our pile of experts, best. Saint and myself, thought that that was the third best. But notice how he's different, played differently there. But right. here is Negretti. Bulgaria, they're not there this time. That's one of the reasons why. And the winner, it's that man Maradona again, the goal and, against and England. This is what he's not doing this year, Ian, well, he's, is he's it? Not. He's not taking players on, but that was an outstanding win. That was the great goal. So that's it. And the winner of the £2,000 this week is Mr David Keyes of Ballymena in Northern Ireland. That's well, Jackie Fullerton's hometown. Jackie Fullerton will be round with a begging bowl and a song, <laughs> won't he? Please give me some money. <laughs> OK, congratulations, Mr Keyes. Now, if you fancy a crack at this week's £2,000 prize, then settle back and enjoy this week's top six goals. And once again, we want you to put your top three in order. Now, goal A is Carlos Valderrama for Colombia against the UAE. Great ball. Now, what's Valderrama made of? We'll see if we've got one of the class performers of the World Cup or not now. Oh, we have! Goal B is Paul Caladuri for United States against Czechoslovakia. Caladuri in position and Caladuri could score. And he has scored! Goal C, the first goal by Kareka against the Swedes. Good play here and a lovely ball through. Kareka, Kareka a great chance for the first. Goal D, the second by Lothar Matthias for West Germany against Yugoslavia. Matthias with some space. Supporting play, Foller and Klinsmann. Matthias can go again. Oh, great goal! Goal E, this is Dava Jozic on Thursday afternoon against Colombia. Susic is a nice ball. Chipped into the middle for Pants, uh, Jozic. Jozic has... 
And finally, go left, Giuseppe Giannini against the United States of America. Useful play, but as it was helped on by Donadoni. So, those are the 60 to choose from. Select your top three in order, and this is how to enter. Ring this number, 0898 9090, and remember to leave your name, your number, your telephone number, and the letters of your top three goals. Calls cost 25p per minute, cheap rate 38p at other times. That number again, 0898 9090. Alternatively, if you want to enter by post, put your answers in a postcard only, please, and send them to ITV World Cup Goals Competition, London Weekend Television, London, SE 996YW. And good luck with your entries and results on next week's show. Now, one of the problems facing the ITV team in Italy is that every time they arrive in a city for a match, there's an alcohol ban in Serves them right. <laughs> the Italian authorities have made it an offence to sell alcohol on match days to reduce trouble. But of course, this also affects tourists and locals with no interest in the World Cup. Gary Newborn reports from Rome. This is the moment Italy had been waiting for all week. The national team, favourites to win the World Cup, about to take on the rank outsiders from the United States. A record of 26 million Italians watched the game on television. Outside the stadium, the streets of Rome, though, were deserted. The government had banned the sale of alcohol on match days in the host cities. So instead of the traditional gathering of fans in bars and restaurants, the Italians were all watching the game on TV at home. The ban, which applies for 48 hours in Rome, has been met with anger by bar, hotel and restaurant managers. Yes, it's very bad. You lose a lot of money? We lose a lot of money. Not me, everybody, not all, a restaurant, bar, everybody. And the tourists in Rome are understandably frustrated at not being able to do as the Romans do. I think it's uh, the pitch. You can't eat Italian food and not drink wine. It just doesn't add up. Well, to make matters worse, the Italian team were doing little to lift spirits. No wine, and now no Italian goal feast. What a contrast in the noisy bars of Turin. Outside Rome's alcohol-free zone, the drink was flowing. And some fans were so laid back, it was as if they knew Giannini would save the day. Back in Rome, you could almost hear a Perrier drop, and the only thing to get drunk on, it seemed, was love. Oh. Do you know what? That would be the first time ever Gary Newborn's been sober. <laughs> it's incredible. I'll tell you, he'll have, he'll have DTs in a few days' time. He'll be eating cigars. Yeah. I'll tell you, honestly, he'll be gone. Oh. That's good. Right, so big day for the home nations. Both England and Scotland need a win. And finally today we hear from one man who can inspire England to that end if he plays to his potential. Violinist Nigel Kennedy has been entertaining the troops this week. And now, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, as you've never heard it before. <laughs>
Oh, wonderful. Brilliant. Yeah. Any brilliant, our Nige. Now, I would give my right arm for an England and Scotland win tonight. Yeah. But since I can't, have Clive's <laughs> instead. There you are, Sane. So there you go. Three cheers for Clive. Have another arm. Why not? <laughs> right, well, that's it. Goodbye from us both for a couple of hours. We'll be back later this afternoon. But a reminder that you can see highlights of both the England and Scotland matches at 10.55 tonight. Before that, at 3.45 today, we have another look at those brilliant Brazilians as they take on the conquerors of Scotland, Costa Rica. Bye for now. Ricans equally flamboyant, a World Cup showdown with Brazil once beyond their wildest dreams.